This is the second part to my video on perfect competition. Now, in this video, we're going to be looking at, in the short run, how firms can make abnormal profits and losses in a perfectly competitive market, and how in the long run, all they can make is a normal profit. So, um, let's start with what the market sees. So, this is where the market's at, for example, for potatoes. We have a supply, demand, equilibrium A, output Q1, price Q1, say it's £5 for, I don't know, whatever the product is, the firm will see this, they'll see their marginal cost, they'll see the average cost, but they will also see their demand curve, which is equal to average cost, which is equal to, no, which is equal to, sorry, average revenue and marginal revenue, and that would be what the price is, because as we identify, firms have to, they are price takers, they have to stick to the price of the market in a perfectly competitive market. Now, with the perfectly competitive market, there are no barriers to entry or exit, so firms can leave and come in all the time. So, now let's say something terrible happens and all the firms are leaving the industry. So, supply is decreased, and if supply decreases, it shifts to the left and price increases. So, let's draw this on S2, equilibrium B, new quantity of Q2. And we have a new equilibrium price of £7, which has gone up from P1, which was £5, it's P2. Now, this new P will be the new demand curve. So, if we just draw it on like a straight line, as smooth as possible, this demand curve is equal to the new marginal revenue, which is equal to the new average revenue. Now, a firm will make a profit, an abnormal profit in this scenario. And this profit will be this this rectangular space right here. Now why is that? Because if we look at the average cost curve, that's the lowest point where MC equals AC is where um, productive efficiency occurs. It's where the costs are minimised because after that, as you can see, costs begin to rise because um, the law of um, diminishing returns. So that's why a usual firm would operate at this level yeah and this price is five pounds but now because supply decreased a firm has more demand increased demand so it's increased from here to here they're now working at seven pounds so all of this money here is basically abnormal profit because here it's normal profit because marginal revenue equals marginal cost here which is um, the profit maximization point but now it's increased and so this two pounds difference between seven and five is the abnormal profit so let me just write that down here abnormal profit so now let's say all these firms are making abnormal profits so what happens other people other entrepreneurs look and say this is a good market to get, it's a hot market, let's get into this market and let's, you know, take advantage of it. So what happens is many firms come into the market and it's easier because in a perfect market there are no barriers to entry or exit. So now supply will increase, so it will shift to the right. And this time let's say it exceeds the original supply. So we have S3 which was here. Okay, so we have our equilibrium C. Quantity is now increased, is higher, so Q3. And then we have price, which has fallen because of the increased amount of supply. So we have P3. And let's say it's dropped from 5 to 2 pounds. Okay, now the new demand is this. It's over here. This is their new demand. The demand has decreased because there's a lot more firms. A firm will make a loss in this scenario. And the last will be this rectangle just over here. So let's write loss. Now, why is that the loss? That is the loss because, as we mentioned before, a normal firm, the normal demand, where average um, costs equal average revenue, this point here, or ACMC, where there's the productive efficiency before costs begin to rise, where average costs and marginal costs, this point here is. Um, where normal firms operate. But if they were operating below that, that means all of this space here, the average cost is much greater than the average revenue and therefore they have a loss. And this is why firms will go bankrupt and they will leave the industry. 
So that's in the short run these things happen. But in the long run, firms are leaving, firms are entering. In the long run, basically, as we have discovered before, um, in, the, in a perfectly competitive market, it does not make a significant change to market price. So let's look at the long run graph. What happens in the long run? So actually, let me just start again. The diagram works out easier. And it's very interesting, this diagram, for the long run. So what does the market see? The market has quantity, it's price, it has demand, and it has a supply. There's an equilibrium A. Quantity Q1, price P1, let's say five. Now, whether supply is shifting left or right, or wherever it's shifting, at the end, in the long run, it's going to stay like this because there is not significant change going to be made to the price in a perfectly competitive market as we established before because there are no barriers to entry or exit. So now let's look at what the firm sees. You have output here, you have costs slash revenue here. So let's do the easy one. They have marginal costs, they have average cost. Now what happens is, is this is the demand curve as we established before. So the demand equals MR equals AR. And the firm operates here. Now in the long run, firms make normal profit because average revenue take or average cost is the same, it's zero, it's not break even, we call it a normal cost because it includes opportunity costs as well. So in the long run, firms are not making are non profits or they're not making losses, they are just because they are at the original point and this is normal profit. Now why I've drawn this diagram, you know, I wouldn't have drawn it only for those points, there's something really important about it. In a perfectly competitive market, in the long run, we can achieve productive efficiency as well as allocative efficiency. And we can't do this in any other market, like achieve them simultaneously. So firstly the point of profit maximization, so let's say this point here, profit maximization, MC equals MR. So MC equals MR is this circle just here, I'm going to colour in red. Okay, now why is profit maximization MC equals MR? Because if MC is greater than MR, uh, we can still, um, no sorry, if MR, marginal revenue, is greater than marginal cost, then we can still increase production, so you know we're missing out on output which we could create to make profit, so we keep on making that. If marginal cost was greater than marginal revenue, then we're making a loss, so therefore the profit maximization point is marginal cost equals marginal revenue, and that's the red point there. So we've identified it. Now let's put a green point for the productive efficiency. Now this is where a firm minimizes its cost. And the reason why this is, is because after um, MC equals MR, as you notice, MC starts to rise and AC starts to rise because of law of diminishing returns and blah blah blah. And over here, as you can see, AC is decreasing and this is because you're specializing, you're improving your space and therefore um, AC is decreasing, average cost is decreasing. So the productive efficiency point is where marginal cost equals average cost. And that too, as you will notice, is this red point here, which is profit maximization. And as you've guessed, guessed it, allocative efficiency. This is producing how much the consumers require. And this point is where price equals AR, which we already identified, equals marginal cost. That means you are producing just the right amount. Your cost is equal to what you're getting in the price. So you produce the right amount using the right amount of resources and that's where AR equals MC. So let's see. This is AR. This is MC. They intersect here. So this point basically, what I'm trying to say, is really important because it's where profit is maximized, productive efficiency occurs and allocative efficiency occurs. Thank you for watching my video.